Hi, the title of this talk is The Investigation of Bioengineering Composite Bone Scaffolds. My name is Kimberly Cochinal, and I'm presenting on behalf of my lab as well as my graduate student, Anila Teresa Janet Rajesh Khanna, and my undergraduate student, Zachary Yamer. About a half million bone grafting procedures are done in the U.S. per year where bone scaffolds are an excellent alternative for substitution of missing pieces of bone due to bone injury or trauma, infection, or necrosis. Uh, bones also demonstrate the piezoelectric effect which aids in the stimulation of bone growth. A lot of materials such as natural and synthetic polymers, inorganics, as well as ceramic polymer composites have been considered as candidates for engineered bone scaffolds. This work focuses on ceramic polymer composites because they can be tailored to meet many of the challenges associated with the development and implementation of bone scaffolds, which typically are material compatibility, both in terms of mechanical and uh, electrical properties, structural morphology, and the ability of the bone scaffold to facilitate adhesion, growth, and proliferation. So in this work, the research questions are, how do the processing techniques influence the mechanical and electrical properties, as well as what types of processes and practices can be used in order to achieve the ASTM standard that's used for testing bioengineered scaffolds. A conventional centering uh, mix and mold process was used in order to fabricate these samples where what should be noted is that a two-step milling process as well as a uh, parametric study for optimization of the polarization process was used in order to facilitate the fabrication of scaffolds that mimic the bone uh, properties. The materials were characterized using the ASTM D695 standard compression test where the samples were made with a 2 to 1 ratio and the piezoelectric properties were also tested where our results indicated that we were able to achieve ideal compressive strength that is compatible with that of bone with a substantially smaller percentage of active piezoelectric uh, materials in comparison to other works. And we were able to achieve uh, fairly high piezoelectric strain coefficients that are comparable to those where there were substantially higher active um, piezoelectric materials. And this was due in part to uh, the use of a um, two-step milling process um, as well as um, optimization of the polarization uh, process that is used in order to polarize the bone scaffold. This work is um, based on support from the National Science Foundation under grant 1659818.